Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to teach you how to create realistic physics in Blender 2.6. So as you can see, I've got this nice animation here, and I want you to mostly pay attention to the cubes, because they're what we're going to be creating in this tutorial, because they're more interesting than spheres when it comes to physics, because spheres just roll around and annoying, yeah, they're all, well they just really bash into things and they don't do much. But cubes, you can see this cube here tumbles, and this one is lovely. Um, so yeah, let's get into the tutorial now. So if we press Ctrl N to start up a new scene in Blender and then press Tab, uh, you go into edit mode with this cube selected. Now with every uh, vertex select or with every vertice selected, press G, Z, 1. And that will just bring it above the grid square and also place the origin at the base of the cube. Now that's not too important, I don't know why I do that, but I just prefer it sometimes. Uh, it can make modeling a bit easier. Now I'm going to select the top face, oh yeah to go into face select just press uh, control tab while in edit mode and choose face then right click on this face then shift right click on this one and press X and click on faces and what that's done is basically deleted the top and one of the sides of this cube. Now I'm not really going to carry on explaining any basics to you because I sort of uh, the majority of you watching will not already know the basics and um, this isn't really a basic tutorial, none of my tutorials are specifically basic, uh, so yeah, I'm not going to explain that to you. Anyway, I'm just uh, grabbing these top vertices and sliding them down by pressing G, Z, uh, and just moving them down. And now, uh, in, still inside edit mode, I'm going to press S, X, 3. And that will just make it three times longer than uh, it previously was. And with these end vertices, I'm just going to move them a bit back, just like I moved these ones here out a bit. I'm going to just, uh, I'll just bring these a bit more out like that. And the reason why I'm doing this is it just creates a flatter wall around the edge, so it sort of catches objects a bit easier. Hmm. Um, all right, so now that we've done that, let's just add a plane. I'm just going to make this plane quite big like that. No need to really, you know. We just need a plane there. Making it big is just optional, but it's also helpful. So uh, if we just bring this up, rotate it, and just place it wherever you like. Uh, this is going to be the sort of final part of our slope. We're just going to duplicate this. Press R Z 180 or R Z 180, and that will just uh, flip it round like that. We want the end that doesn't have a wall there to be the place where they leave obviously because otherwise they just get stuck and yeah so now that we've done that I'm just going to duplicate this one again like that maybe give it a yeah keep the, keep the same rotation um, yeah okay so now that we've done that we're going to create the small bumps in the surface of the uh, ramp things uh, just because it makes more interesting physics so to do that we're just going to add a cube uh, in fact, no, let's do this later actually, because this is a bit fiddly and you don't have to do a whole lot of things loads of times. Alright, so we've got these ramps. Now to add the cube. So if we just add our cube again, uh, yeah, just move it up here. I'm going to scale it down like that. Uh, you know, you, you sort of get to a dead end where you don't quite know what to do. You press Alt A, nothing happens. Um, but yeah, the way we do this is up here where it says Blender Render, go, uh, choose Blender Game. And now, you might think, oh yeah, press Alt-A, still nothing happens. The reason why is because in the physics over here, uh, physics type is set to static. You set this to rigid body, and then press P, that will then preview our thing. You can see that there are some physics applied, but they're still very basic and don't quite work. And you also notice that these ramps are invisible at certain angles. The reason why is because we've entered the game engine, uh, that means that uh, it only displays the side that has the normals on it. So you can see the visible here, but not on the other side. And the reason is, as I say, the normals are on the wrong side. So if we go into edit mode and under mesh display, under normals choose face, you'll see that these uh, sort of hair things that stick out are basically um, uh, pointing the wrong way. And if we come over here to our toolbar by pressing uh, T, then yeah it pops up with this and under the normal section if we click on flip direction 
you can see they're now facing inwards and the reason why they're facing outwards is because this was a cube and everything was facing outwards but now that they're facing inwards when you press P you can see it nicely well not nicely because there's not enough light on it but it's visible and that's a start I'm just going to do this for all of these ramps uh, where is it? Uh, flip normals uh, yeah there we go and here there we go and now everything should be nice and visible but the cube physics as I said earlier are basic and not nice at all but I want to be able to see the top ramp so I'm just going to bring up this lamp, I might even make it a spot lamp and there we go, just have it facing directly down you can just quickly do that with any lamp by pressing ALT R as long as you haven't played around too much um, alright so now when I press P as I say, well again the physics are terrible uh, but we can see things a bit better so the way we uh, improve the physics is in this, this doesn't have any collision bounds it just collides around where the origin is which is this nasty little orange blob here so if you notice when the cube gets halfway oh wait no uh, hmm, I thought that's how it worked no uh, basically it has very basic collision and doesn't have any bound to it but if we click this and it's automatically set to box so that's fine because we're using a cube which is a box in layman terms if we press P now you can see that it reacts with a lot more detail and it's a lot more realistic but it's boring so we're just going to add another cube and I'm just going to uh, yeah if we press S shift Y yeah then what will happen is uh, we can basically scale it on every axis apart from the Y axis uh, well yeah that's basically what happens and we're just going to rotate it round a bit like that so get it a nice angle like that and under collision bounds we're going to have we're just going to tick that leave it at box again that way it no oh yeah we're going to leave this at static though but that way the cube knows to react with that like a fellow box if that makes any sense at all but yeah there we go so I'm just going to have another one further up like that and they're not really doing anything just keeps tumbling over them but if we just add a few of these on every ramp then uh, yeah things should get a bit better um, start reacting a bit more let me just bring that down and with these I'm just gonna duplicate these bring them down and with this one move that down like that okay now we should get some much more interesting physics now seeing as all oh, right it gets stuck brilliant let's just delete that one uh, yeah we should get better well interesting physics not better because the physics is fine how it is all right so there we go things are looking nice um, I am actually going to have another one just keeping it a smaller one um, but yeah you can play around with that I'm just doing this ooh, right now that screw it I'm gonna get rid of it um, but yeah so yeah that's fine now you think brilliant how do I then convert it into IPO keyframes the way we do this is we change it from blender gate sorry we don't change it up here where it says game we're gonna choose record animation and if we press P uh, you can see that uh, the same thing happens but you have to press P so it can uh, rerun the physics uh, engine part and basically yeah record it and now when we go into blender render and press alt a you can see that things are now happening and if we open up our timeline you can see there's a keyframe on everything but you'll also notice it's going pretty slowly and uh, you know slower than it was going in the physics engine and that's because if we come back here uh, just go back to the first frame otherwise you get some problems further down the line um, what happens is in the world panel up here you can see that in this section here we've got uh, things says FPS 60 and that means that the physics is running at 60 frames per second and uh, seen as the uh, well we can't see it but the actual animation in the blender render is playing at 24 so it's basically getting this is as I say this is 60 frames per second and that's trying to that's <sighs> it's hard to explain but while this is going at 60 the other thing's going at 24 so it basically gets all these 60 frames and then spaces it out in between a few seconds because it's only doing 24 frames per second so we need to uh, lower this down to 24 
Now when you press P, you can see it's going a lot faster and it's, it messes up. See the cube is spazzing out on the floor there. And the reason why this is happening is because, um, well yeah, it's basically trying to, it's calculating in the same time frame. So uh, it's, it's hard to explain, but it, yeah, as I said, it's calculating in the same time frame, but because it hasn't got those extra frames to sort of uh, calculate it in a bit more detail, then it's just messing up. And the way we fix this is just increase the sub steps, and that means that it will calculate things in between these frames and uh, sort of move it onto the next frame. So it's sort of invisible frames that it's got here. So now when we press P, you can see that, oh, it gets stuck. Well, that's just brilliant. Ooh, just had some weird breathe in there. I don't know what happened. Anyway, just lower that down, press P again, and you can see it's doing its thing. And now when we go back to the Blender render, press Alt A, it's going down at a good speed and it's nice and realistic. It's slowly there though. But that's not a problem. So yeah, now that we've got that done, uh, we are practically finished really with this whole uh, scene. So yeah, you can render this out and you know, you can have a few things like a lot of scenes that you see like when there's rubble, uh, there's a good chance that they just got a load of objects and just use the physics engine to place them. Uh, so yeah, that, that's just another use for the physics engine. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learnt uh, some stuff from it. Uh, if you did, please do subscribe to my channel and check out uh, more of my useful tutorials for Blender. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching and goodbye.